Hi. A while back, I asked people on Instagram to send me questions on food science that they would like answered, and they sent me well, hundreds of them. And this is an attempt to answer those questions. The first of those questions was spicy versus hot. Are they the same thing? Why do we use them interchangeably? To understand this, we first need to understand how chilies work. I am now going to bite into this. All right, let's see what happens. As I bite into the chili, there's a molecule called capsaicin, which hits a sensor uh, in the mouth called TRPV1. And this sensor is all over the place. It's not just on your tongue, it's everywhere. So that's why you instantly feel as if your mouth is on fire. Why? Because the TRPV1 sensor detects when you eat high temperature food. And the reason it exists is so that if you eat very hot food, you would end up damaging your gastrointestinal tract. Capsaicin happens to fit into the sensor, and so it fools your brain into thinking that your mouth is literally on fire. So the brain reacts by sending more blood to the face. It also makes you sweat so that it cools your face down. So it's taking evasive action. What also happens is that there's an endorphin rush. Uh, so the rush of dopamine into your brain uh, that causes you to feel happy. Uh, this is why we enjoy uh, hot food uh, because it gives us a little bit of pleasure after the pain. So what's interesting is that evolution has designed a reward mechanism that always pains a little bit of pleasure after pain so that you don't get crippled, right? So now you might think to solve this, do I drink water? If you want to get rid of the capsaicin in your mouth, water is not the right thing to drink because capsaicin is not water soluble. What you should drink is milk. The milk will wash away the capsaicin very, very efficiently. And you'll see that your mouth returns back to normal pretty, pretty quickly, right? So that's how chilies work. So why do we use the term spicy and hot interchangeably? To answer that question, let me ask you this. What is the taste of chilies? Do chilies have an aroma? So let me confuse you further by saying that what I just experienced is a sensation. It's neither taste nor aroma. It's a sensation. What's the difference between taste, aroma, and sensation? Let's break it down. Taste is what you detect on your tongue with taste buds. The only things you can detect on your tongue are sweet, salt, sour, bitter, and umami. Aroma or smell, or if you want to appear really smart, olfaction, is 80% of the perception of flavor. We can sense upwards of 10,000 unique smells. And this is why food has no flavor when you're recovering from a cold or from COVID, where anosmia is a very common long-term side effect of COVID. Spices usually don't have taste. Spices have aroma. They're usually bitter. Try eating cardamom with your nose closed and you'll find that it merely tastes bitter. The root of the word spice is the same as the root of the word special or specific. In ancient times, the Roman port of Alexandria in Egypt would impose customs duties on a special list of items that they called spices. Anything that was on that list attracted customs duty and anything that was not on that list did not attract customs duty. This is the origin of the word spice. Funnily enough, the one spice that was not on this list was pepper because the Romans imported such large quantities that it was actually exempt from customs duty. Sensations. We have sensors in our mouth to detect food that is hot, pungent, or cold. When you eat mint, what you're actually experiencing is that the molecule menthol in the mint actually triggers the receptors that detect cold, the exact opposite of what chilies do. That's why when you eat anything with menthol, your mouth feels cooler. Incidentally, ginger, pepper, and mustard also trigger the same receptors that chilies do, except that they use different molecules uh, to do it, and they're not as effective as chilies are in giving you the sensation of heat. And since chilies are very new to the world outside the Americas, this is why we use the term spicy interchangeably with hot, because pepper and ginger were the original hot spices. One of the interesting things about mustard 
is that its molecule, methyl isothiocyanate, is volatile, meaning that it doesn't do much in the mouth. It actually travels through the back of your mouth and when you breathe out, up into your nasal cavity. That's why you experience mustard and wasabi in your nose and not necessarily in your mouth. Back to chilies. If you're wondering which part of the chili actually has most of the heat, and you'll often find internet recipes telling you to remove the seeds. It's not the seeds, it's not the flesh of the chili, it's actually the white placenta to which the seeds are attached. So normally when you remove the seeds, you end up removing the placenta as well. That's where most of the heat is. The reason we remove seeds as well is because the seeds are usually bitter. In capsicum, which has no heat, the bitterness of the seeds is particularly strong. You can also reduce the heat of chilies by soaking them in an acid like vinegar. Acetic acid dissolves capsaicin and so less of it is available to stick to the sensors in your mouth. Since capsaicin is antimicrobial, the only part of the chili that is susceptible to fungal infection is the stalk. So as long as you remove the stalk before you store it in the fridge, it will last forever. If you want to dig deeper into this, read my book, Masala Lab, The Science of Indian Cooking. See you next time.